Unfortunately, the Muslims forgot these injunctions and the results are evident today in the humiliating state of the Muslim world. The Muslim world needs to inculcate the values of trust, equity, justice, forgiveness and brotherhood. But above all comes the injunction of righteousness because it is from righteousness that every other condition flows. Peace is not a physical security or the absences of war and conflict, although it is essential aspect of the wider concept of peace, peace really means harmonious adjustment and an orientation of the individual with and towards on the one hand his creator and on the other hand his fellow human beings. Peace must originate in the heart of man. No one can be at peace with his brother unless he is at peace with himself. And no one can be at peace with himself unless he is at peace with his maker. This is the fundamental of peace and a most comprehensive concept. The Holy Quran, the vast reservoir of divine guidance, simply tells us those who have faith and do not let it be debased by injustice are the ones who shall have peace. It is they who are rightly guided. Chapter 6, verse 83. In fact, equity and justice, that is, absolute justice, is the core around which a fair society can be built. That is why obligation of adherence to the truth and of acting justly is not restricted only to matters of dispute. It comprehends all spheres of life. Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih Khamis, Ayyadat Ta'ala bin Nasr Aziz, in his address to the world during the 2007 peace conference, touched on the issue of absolute justice in the global environment. Hazur declared, and I quote, We can only establish peace in the world when the nations and countries try to establish peace in this way. It is regrettable that the leagues of nations did not follow these principles and failed as a consequence. Today, the United Nations Organization also seems to be failing in dispensing the requirement of justice. There are different standards of justice for different countries and different continents, except for some very few decisions most of the resolutions passed in the past have been adopted today by United Nations have been based on expediency and partisanship. Till such time that all countries are treated equally and at par and the grudges and the deep-seated sense of injustices are removed, no matter how many organizations are formed, they cannot bring peace to the world. It is also regrettable that the Muslims who have been given this teaching are not acting upon it themselves. They harbor enmity against each other and this is the case all over the world. Peace will remain a dream as each nature considers its own interest above all others. Quoting another example from the annuals of the Muslim history, Hazrat Khalifa al gave the example of Hazrat Abu Dhabba anhu, when he was the governor of Syria in the time of Hazrat Umar anhu. In those days a tax was levied on the Syrian Christians and in return they were exempted from military duty and their protection came the duty of Muslim rulers. Even in this injunction Hazrat Umar anhu, had forbidden to tax the poor. However, when a moment came when there was danger of war from the Constantine forces of the Roman Empire, Hazrat Abu Dhaiba was, as a governor of Syria, instructed his administration to return all the taxes to the Christians, telling them that because he might not be able to provide protection, he had no excuse to retain their taxes. 
The Christians were so impressed by this gesture of honesty and justice that they said with one voice that they prayed that the Muslims become victorious over the Romans and then come back to rule the country. Once again, the Muslims not only do justice but also do good to the Christians. This is why the public authority in all spheres, including judicial authority, should be given only in the hand of those who can discharge it honestly. The Holy Quran commands, Verily, Allah commands you to give over the trust to those entitled to them, and that when you judge between men, you judge with justice. And surely excellent is that with which Allah admonishes you. Allah is all hearing, all seeing. Chapter 4, verse 59. Then again, the Holy Quran admonishes, O ye who believe, be steadfast in the cause of Allah, bearing witness in equity, and let not people's enmity incite you to act otherwise than with justice. Be always just that is nearest to righteousness and fear Allah surely Allah is aware of what you do chapter 5 verse 9 the promised Messiah Islam, explaining this verse states Allah the Almighty says about justice they cannot be achieved without truthfulness that your enmity towards enemy nations should not hinder you from dispensing justice. Remain just because righteousness lies in it. I say to you, in truth, that it is easy to deal with an enemy with hostility, but it is very difficult to safeguard the rights of opponents and to deal justly with your enemy. This is the ultimate state of establishing peace with justice that if you have to testify, you must remain just. At another place it enjoins that even if you have to testify against yourself or your near ones, then you must testify fulfilling the requirements of justice. At the same time it also said that even the enmity of a nation should not make you deviate from justice. You can notice this commandment being practiced in the early part of Islamic history when a dispute between a Muslim and a Jewish citizen was brought before Hazrat Umar and he found that the Jewish citizen to be right and decided in his favor. Once again showing that justice had to be paramount over all other matters. Indeed, there is great emphasis on justice, whether a judge or as a witness, that the stability of a society or a nation depends on it. However, a true and righteous believer must move beyond justice and dispend good, asan. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Verily, Allah enjoins justice and doing of good to others and giving like kindred and forbids indecency and manifests evil and trans transgression he admonishes you that you may take heed chapter 16 verse 91 explaining this verse the prophet Islam says this verse means that you should deal with equity with your near ones and with humanity at large and do not demand from them any more than that is your right and persevere with justice. If you wish to progress further, the next stage is to do ashan, good. And if your brethren use his wickedness, return his wickedness with a good deed. And in turn, for the pain that he has caused you, provide him with comfort and as good will provide him help. The next stage is like kindred, and that is that whatever good deeds and favors you do to your brethren and to human beings, 
you should do that without any expectations of favor. You should do that out of sheer humanitarian feelings and without any hesitancy.